A key decision you'll have to make when it comes to your build in Cyberpunk 2077 is which operating system to run with. From the time-slowing Sandeviston, invincibility-granting Berserk, to the dressed-up magic system of Cyberdex, or even the simple but underrated Chrome Compressor. I compared them all so you don't have to. Now sit back, relax, and let's get to it. First up, and this is in no particular order, each of these have merits and drawbacks, I'll summarise each, provide some tips, and draw more direct comparisons at the end. Sandeviston is of course the time-slowing, quicksilver-esque implant massively popularised by David Martinez and cyberpunk edgerunners, serving as their key for kicking off that entire storyline. As such, it has remained a heavily beloved piece of kit, not only for sentimental reasons, but also for the incredibly satisfying slow-mo gameplay style that it enables. Prior to 2.0, the Sand Sandeviston was majoritively limited, however, to just working best with melee weapons, as our body speed boost wouldn't extend to the mechanisms of guns, obviously, making it just feel like they're firing really slowly. Indeed, it was only weapons with one shot, which could then be reloaded superhumanly fast, that saw any benefit from the Sandy, i.e. Comrade Hammer and Sovereign. Now, however, once we acquire one of the higher level Sandevistons, the Militech Falcon or Apogee, we could afford to push the boat out a little. See, both of these have the fantastic ability to toggle on and off at will, as opposed to having to wait on a full recharge. Now, this pairs brilliantly with semi-automatic weapons, as well as, of course, the standard melee still. Semi-automatics will still leave natural gaps between shots, but since we can now toggle on and off between those, a great method is to briefly activate the Sandy in the final moments of lining up headshots, both reaping the bonus damage boosts and ensuring a greater accuracy. Mind you, for players to whom a good aim comes naturally, it can definitely still feel like combat is being unnecessarily slowed down. This was certainly the case for me when testing with shotguns, and I'd say it was best paired with pistols, revolvers, and sniper rifles. Though you can discount tech weapons as they take time to charge up, which obviously doesn't gel well with a time-slowing device. Smart weapons are mostly automatic too, leaving just a large handful of power weapons to play with. A standout build for me was pairing the Sandeviston with Overwatch to stealthily snipe groups from afar, though arguably taking a cyberdeck and spotting enemies with the likes of ping could be more useful here, depending on your accuracy. In fact, this brings me to my next point on Sandevistons, which is of course the Sandeviston we have at home, Gorenzikov, activated not with the touch of a button, but rather by sliding, dashing, or dodging. More clunky to use, and not quite so simple in lining up a shot, though taking Gorenzikov instead is the closest vanilla way to achieve something like Sandeviston and Cyberdeck at the same time, which I know a lot of people would like. We'll get to why shortly. Gorenzikov also, however, slows you, the player, so only really helps with reaction times rather than speeding up V in any way. Additionally, Reflex Tuner, Revulsa, or Synaptic Accelerator can provide further instances of time slowing in combat but can't be activated manually. Still potentially useful, but nothing comes close to Sandeviston in time slowing versatility. On the whole, I'd say Sandevistons are still primarily designed to be used with melee weapons, predominantly blades, as they attack faster. The Scalpel Katana offers some great bonuses specifically to be paired with a Sandy, whilst Biako is simply unmatched in speed when fighting against larger groups. I've done a whole build video on that, and whilst it got nerfed slightly in 2.1, I'd still argue it's one of the most powerful builds in the entire game. Definitely the best for a Sandeviston, in my opinion, maximising a combo of attack speed, stamina regen, and blade damage. But of course that, and any equivalent OP Sandeviston build, is mainly viable later on in the game, backed up and synergised with all relevant weapons, cyberware, and perks. So how does Sandeviston fare earlier on before you unlock the heavy hitters of Falcon and Apogee? Well, it's still not a bad bonus to have and can offer a nice advantage going into a fight, but given the comparatively lower stat boosts and long cooldowns of lower tier models, it's much more of an occasional bonus than something to structure your entire method of gameplay around. And I found that until I had a god tier Quicksilver build, this didn't quite offer enough of a bonus compared to other OSs to be worth it at the more difficult early stages. That slot belongs, in my opinion, to something else. As I said at the beginning, the Cyberdeck is essentially Cyberpunk's dressed up magic system. Uploading quick hacks is reminiscent of casting spells, and there are a great many to choose from. I took a detailed look at them all back in 1.6, but that list is long overdue a remake. Put simply though, the Cyberdeck is by far the most complex of OS's on offer, with an entire another set of systems nested within, as well as practically an entire perk tree dedicated to the skill sets. Casting spells or uploading hacks with a Cyberdeck will cost 
cost us mana or ram, whose total and regen can be improved by unlocking certain skills and cyberware. And while some intelligent perks are now geared towards the use of smart weapons, make no mistake, this is still very much the cyber deck attribute tree. With one branch of perks improving the ability to overclock, i.e. temporarily convert our health into bonus ram, allowing for more hacking in a short space of time at the expense of making us far more vulnerable. The second branch then improves our quick hack cues, the ability to upload multiple hacks to an enemy at once, maxing out at four. Certain quick hacks like short circuit and cyberware malfunction, or contagion and overheat, do offer damage synergies when uploaded one after another, so being able to stack these can make them exponentially more powerful, turning net running from a basic set of support buffs alongside other weapons to a stupidly OP self-sustaining loop. And here's a method which, granted, has been nerfed a bit since 2.0, and is a little bugged in 2.1, though can still be pretty effective. Using the Tetratronic Rippler and stacking Sonic Shock, then Short Circuit, Cyberware Malfunction, or any Control Quick Hack, and finally Synapse Burnout, should stealthily drop literally any enemy aside from named bosses. Only caveat to this, if you're still watching in 2.1, is Sonic Shock is bugged. Its main purpose of removing Quick Hack tracing doesn't work, so instead, the best alternative I've found is Epic or Above Memory Wipe. It costs more RAM, but does achieve the same effect, and should you happen to accidentally trigger a trace, it will reduce that each time you use it as well. And may actually pair well with the Raven Micro Cyber Deck, since that one specialises in spreading quick hacks, and it usually results in getting traced. But that is just one of the huge scope of quick hack combos available. And there's a lot more nuance to this corner of the game, which I have covered and will continue to cover in more depth for future videos. So be sure to subscribe if that's of interest to you, and let's get a little closer to my 100k goal. Before we move on from Cyber Decks though, there's a few more things to discuss. Firstly, in 2.1, we're added two new pieces of cyberware designed specifically to boost netrunners who are low on RAM or health. Phoenix will boost RAM regenerate by 250% when RAM is below 7 at tier 5, making cheap quick hacks practically always available, whilst Cogito Lattice boosts its own armor rating by 250% when RAM is below 10 again at tier 5, supporting more in-the-fight net gunner based builds, which themselves are a lot more viable now, thanks to perk synergies between Cyberdex and Smart Weapons especially. In fact, the Militech Paraline deck even has the ability to upload hacks faster by shooting enemies with smart weapons, and is a deck literally designed for this kind of build. In fact, there's essentially seven wildly different Cyberdeck builds you can make now, one for each deck, which introduces even more nuance to this operating system. Tetratronic Rippler, for example, is designed for the powerful pure Netrunner, whilst Netwatch Netdriver is now optimized to hack enemies through cameras. I'll do a detailed build for each of these fairly soon. Another way to administer quick hacks in Phantom Liberty is via the use of the monowire, to which you can upload one control quick hack, and I'd recommend cripple movement for holding bosses in place. Monowire, in fact, is the arm cyberware to use if you're running a cyberdeck and also recovers RAM through its use with certain perks. Again, cyberdeck and its related components are essentially an entire magic system that can be entirely skipped, but offers a wealth of special abilities for those who choose to use it. And let's not be forgetting the abilities to disarm cameras, turrets, and mines, as well as all the car hacking added in 2.0, which can make car chases a lot easier, speeding up vehicles, emergency braking, remote controlling, and self-destructing. And without a cyberdeck, you either have to manually shoot these things, or else get up close and pass a certain level of tech check. It's certainly an ease that's sorely missed after you've run with a deck for a good long while, and these benefits are especially useful to have in the earlier game too. But the thing about scanning and clicking stuff is it can eventually get boring depending on how you like to play. So here's a criminally underrated OS, the playstyle for which I don't think I'll ever get bored of. Behaving quite a bit differently since 2.0, Berserk made the interesting choice to become a melee-only ability, temporarily granting the user an inability to die and unlimited stamina. Basically, just grab a hammer, a bat, maybe a sword, or even just go full gorilla fisting mode, then enjoy, between regular intervals, 8 to 12 seconds of sheer mayhem.
It's certainly the most hemmed in OS in terms of versatility. You pretty much have to play a melee tank, especially if you want to stay alive in between uses, and that understandably isn't for everyone. Some want to stealth it or shoot through a room with tactical gunplay, but I mean, come on. There's something just primarily satisfying about tearing your way through hordes of foes with the same blunt force methodology employed by our very earliest ancestors. And to the 3 or 4% of you who voted it best, it's clear that you guys understand this. And for the higher level, body-based builds who've unlocked Savage Sling, yeah, that's gonna make this method of play even more fun. Though a big problem I've found with Berserk is that unlike Sandeverston's, no model exists that can be toggled on and off at will, provided there's some charge. Instead, always leaving lengthy gaps between its use, during which you'll have to either hide, boringly, or utilize other means by which to fight and survive. Mind you, once reaching a higher level, the Militech Berserk does have a very decent cooldown of just 25 seconds at top tier. But for Berserks earlier on in the game, it's a similar deal as with Sandeverstance. A sweet but fleeting buff to be used occasionally and usually at the start of a fight, for which you're trading out, at the very least, a huge host of reconnaissance abilities, which could be especially useful earlier on. Is the brief stint of invincibility worth it? Well, we'll come back to that. But if you want a more detailed breakdown of all the Berserks, then load up this video for afterwards. For now though, it's onto a much more basic and arguably even more underrated OS. Added as a Phantom Liberty exclusive, the Chrome Compressor does one very, very simple thing. Rather than using up cyberware capacity, it instead grants you more. And as of 2.1, it was buffed to be even better and cheaper, now increasing capacity up to a maximum of 70 at tier 5++. Though bear in mind, it's gonna feel like even more than that, since we'll also free up the extra capacity we would have spent on a different operating system. For example, if you switch the Apogee Sandy out for this, you'll technically get an extra 114 cyberware, 70 from the maxed out compressor, and 44 for not using the Apogee. And that's about it. No special abilities, you just become a classic protagonist of an FPS. Except now, the ceiling for other cyberware is tremendously increased. And whereas before you couldn't necessarily afford all the best stuff for your chosen build, perhaps you can now. Full armor, fairly straightforward, as is damage mitigation and both the hand mods that decrease recoil. Before you know it, you have yourself an extremely tanky build, and I would argue that Chrome Compressor is actually the best OS for both shotgun and LMG builds, especially in 2.1, with shotties of course benefiting from being able to get up close and personal, whilst LMGs are most effective when you can just stand there and accurately spray let. In fact, here's a tip for LMG builds. Grab the Xmod 2 MA70 LMG from the crashed chopper in Dogtown, load it up with at least one Big Mag mod, and acquire the top tier Onslaught perk. With this combo, you should never really have to reload again. Provided you're fairly accurate, you can just endlessly fire and each enemy will replenish 20% of the magazine. It's utterly insane and yes, Sandy, Berserk or Cyberdeck wouldn't really be a help with that. And instead, having all the other cyberware that's on screen now is far more useful. But it's not just shotguns and LMGs that I found this pairs well with. It's also been decent when testing pistols and isn't a bad shout with ARs and SMGs either. It certainly feels a bit less cyber and a bit more soldier, and it's a little wasted on melee builds when Sandy and Berserk are such good alternatives there. But it may just be the winner for anyone who straight up just wants to use guns. Though in reality, all it really allows for is a greater cyberware capacity sooner on in the game. After all, capacity shards are continuously found on enemies the more you play, and at the very top level, the need for this device may become lesser. After all, these soldier-esque builds don't use any ability of the compressor per se, they just benefit from the extra extra capacity. So whilst I think the Chrome Compressor is underrated, and I personally use it a lot, especially when testing the guns, it may not necessarily be worth it unless you've carefully plotted out the rest of your cyberware as well, and find it to be a necessary bonus. But now, let's go over a couple final points, give you my opinion of worst to best, as well as which is probably best for you. Overall then, which operating system is best is gonna largely depend. Berserk is clearly the least popular classic one, and definitely offers the least range, limited to melee only, and whilst I'll still probably rate it lowest for those reasons, it is still a heavily underrated build which I would highly recommend you try at least once, and is possibly the winner in terms of raw primal fun, especially in a 20 body build with Savage Sling. After that, I'd put the Chrome Compressor marginally, in the sense that there's a bit more you can do with it, even though it itself 
itself does precious little, but again, this is all subjective. Berserk is clearly best for blunt weapons, Scrum Compressor for shotguns and LMGs. For blades though, and possibly revolvers, it is undoubtedly best to go with a Sandeverston. I love my LMG tank build, but it just cannot take down max tack like my Biako Apogee, or Scalpel Apogee, or a Ratter and a Gal. There's a lot of variations, and all of them are insanely powerful, even after 2.1 where Apogee got nerfed. If anything, I'd say the nerf was necessary, as Sandy builds simply were just too powerful. But again, until you get later into the game and really have a Sandy build figured out, it is not necessarily an ever-presently useful OS. That title, of course, goes to the Cyberdeck, and I'm gonna resist the wave of Edge Runners fans here for a second and argue that most likely, on balance, Cyberdeck is the best OS in game, simply thanks to the sheer breadth of abilities it offers, as well as how insanely OP some of the combinations are. Having a Cyberdeck is like a remote control for most of the things and people in the game, literally, and giving it up is a huge sacrifice. It has, for starters, so many stealth buffs, shutting things off, offering distractions, and silently wiping enemies, yet at the same time, especially in the latest updates, there are builds that work great in the heat of combat too. And overall, I think it's fitting that in a game called Cyberpunk, a cyber wizard is just about the most powerful thing you can be, from a certain point of view. Again, it all depends on build, and that should largely be based on what you find the most fun. I suppose you could say that the cyberdeck does just kind of boil down to clicking things, but it's more about the creative different ways that you can do that. So let me know in the comments, which of these OS's do you prefer? What kind of builds have you been enjoying, and has this video encouraged you to try something new? Thank you so much for watching, and as always, much love to the patrons for keeping the channel alive. Later this month, I'll be finishing off the new weapon rankings, finally, so stay tuned for that. I'm Sam Bram, and I'll see you in the next one.